Hi everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Dave Hiddeman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I want to make a quick overview video for a solution to having remote employees or if you have uh, employees in different offices or maybe a subcontractor who works outside the office and everybody needs to be working on the same project. Um, so first I want to give just a, an overview of what is Tecla model sharing. And really what it is is it's a, it's a solution that addresses limitations with the current multi-user software you may be using, um, which is great for when everybody is in the same office. Um, however, there are some issues with that once you get outside the office. You do need to maintain a constant network connection in order to use multi-user, so that requires something like a VPN. Uh, and unfortunately, the VPN is just not built to handle the amount of traffic and the speed of the data going back and forth that multi-user requires. So while in the office, it's a great solution, uh, once you start getting remote, uh, you're going to run into some problems. So model sharing allows you to have every user uh, involved in the same project, and it doesn't really matter where they're working. They could be in different offices. They could be off-site. And it solves this problem by allowing everyone to have a local copy of the model on their own computer. So they don't need to be connecting back to some server where it's being stored. Everybody's working locally. Um, and it works by allowing them to simply push changes. So not sending the entire model back and forth, but only pushing changes to the cloud service, which then other people can link up to, download those changes, and upload their own, whether it's a modeler, uh, in this case a drawing scrubber, a checker, or even sending data uh, to a shop um, or someone like that. So, like I said, we just want to give you a, a brief overview of how this works, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. So we wanted to create a quick overview of how this process actually works, so that you can get an idea of, of how you can get started as well. Uh, we're going to start in this example with a multi-user model. Now, if you're in a single-user model, you're already ready to go. There's nothing that you have to change. But if you are in a multi-user model, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to convert that project to a single-user model before it can be shared. Because remember, each person is working on their own local copy of the project. So I'm going to convert this to a single-user model. And once that process is complete, we can begin sharing. So we can begin by going to the file menu, choosing sharing, and then start sharing. This is going to open the start sharing dialog box where we can start to invite new users to this project. So I'm going to start by adding uh, Lee Snyder, our steel product manager, to this project. And when you define a user uh, based on their email address, you can also choose their role or their kind of their access privileges to the model. So an editor is going to be uh, anybody who wants to model, create drawings, and do all the basic work in a project. The owner has all the same privileges, but then can also remove the project from the service. Um, then you have viewer and project viewer. A viewer is for someone who just literally needs to view but not actually make any changes in the model, so they will not be able to upload any changes at all. And then a project viewer is somebody who's going to be able to make changes to things like UDAs. So this is going to be very similar to a project viewer license type. The neat thing about this is it doesn't matter what license type that person has, they only have project viewer access to this model. So I'm going to make Lee an editor and I'm going to add him to the project. You can continue to add additional email addresses uh, if you wish. I'm going to also send him an email notification uh, and kind of let him know what I need him to do. So I'm going to say please uh, add anchor bolts and create a B plan for this project because I have other work I need to be doing but I also need to get out uh, that anchor bolt plan for approval so then I'll go ahead and click start and not only will it connect to the service but it's going to do the initial push of this data up to the Tecla model sharing cloud so now Lee is also added to this project 
I can go ahead and I can close that and then I can continue working and that is a critical thing to note about Tecla model sharing while Lee is doing his work I can continue doing mine there is nothing that's gonna stop me from coming in here and adding additional framing or in this case what I'm gonna add next is um, some stairs uh, so I am not locked out of the changes while other people are working in this model Hello everybody, this is Lee Snyder and I want to show you what it looks like once you've been invited to participate in a model sharing project. So this is the email that I received after Dave added me. Uh, you can see here that his specific message is down here at the bottom saying please add anchor bolts and create an anchor bolt plan. And then up towards the top of the email, it'll tell you the name of the model. So this is the model sharing review, the version of Tecla structures that he's using, what environment, and my role. And then specific information about how to load in or to access the model sharing project. So what I'll do is just jump over to Tecla. If I go up here to the top, you can see that there's a shared model section. And I'll click on continue. And that will allow me to join the model sharing service. And this will go through and it will load for me all of the projects that I'm invited to participate in. So that first one there at the top says model sharing review. That's the one I've invited to. Again, I can see my role and who it's from. And I'll just go ahead and click on join. And then what this will do is it will download that information from the model sharing service and then store that local model on my machine so that I can work on it just like I uh, normally would. And then I'll be able to share out my changes uh, as I add information to the model. So I'll just go ahead and let this download here for a minute. Once that's complete, then I can just come in here and open up my 3D view and begin working on the project. So I'll just double click on 3D here. That'll open up my view. And then of course I can spin this around and just begin working on it like I would any other project. I'll come over here to my Applications and Components catalog and open up my Base Plate command and I'll just grab the columns here, click my bottom of Base Plate, and those components will be inserted. Uh, of course I can load in different settings and all that stuff as you normally would. So now that I have those added, uh, I can come up here and also run a numbering. So I'll just come to Numbering Settings. And then I'll just load in our setting number two before creating drawings since I haven't created any drawings yet. And then I'll just perform the numbering, making sure my anchor bolts and columns get their numbers before I generate my anchor bolt plan. And then I'll come and open up my plan at elevation zero. This is the view that I want to create my anchor bolt plan from. So I'll right click and choose create general arrangement drawing. And then I can load in my settings that I want to use. So these plan with details, click OK. And then I'll just go ahead and click on create. Just the normal process for generating a drawing. So I'll go ahead and let that produce the drawing. And then once it's open, um, I can go in, add my dimensions, add any notes, cloud things, rearrange things however I want them. If I want to uh, move the details to a different location, of course, I can do all of that. So just the normal scrubbing process that you would do on any drawing. So I'll finish arranging these details and then I'll have a look at the drawing before I save it. Make sure that I see all of my detail callouts and that everything looks okay. And then I can come up here and just save the drawing. And just a reminder, as we're saving this, all of this is being stored on our local machine. And I can continue working, saving the model here on my local machine. When I'm ready to write out or to share my changes, I can just click that button. And then I can type in a comment if I want and just let Dave or whoever else I'm working on the project know that I've added the anchor bolts and the general arrangement plan. If you want to include a code, you can do that as well. I'll just call this AB plan. And then when I click save, what this will do is it will create a packet and then share that data to everybody else on my model sharing project. So just the changes, the components that I've added, the numbering settings, the general arrangement drawing. And then on their side, they'll be able to see all of that information when they do a read in and we'll show you what that looks like. So while Lee is working on the anchor bolts and the anchor bolt plan that I asked him to do um, because I had to get this stair finished, um, I'm just going to go ahead and add a few more details here. And like I had mentioned, uh, I am not restricted in any way from working on uh, stuff in this model or creating drawings or creating connections or anything like that. Uh, the only thing that I would recommend is to make sure that you coordinate 
so that you're not working on the same thing at the same time because that can create certain types of conflicts. Now Tecla model sharing of course can handle those conflicts for you but it's a lot easier to just communicate from the get-go and that way you avoid any issues in the first place. So um, before I wanted to send this information uh, up to the cloud and I want to get his information I just want to cover a couple of things so first off I can save any time I want that's the benefit of working in my own local model uh, I don't have to be connected to the internet I don't have to have anything to do with sharing right now I'm simply saving saving working in my local model now if I wanted to and I wasn't paying attention and I wanted to just push my changes up to the cloud one of the things I do want you to be aware of is that I cannot push changes until I first download Lee's changes from the sharing service. So you can see right now I just got an error message there saying write out is not allowed because the model is not up to date. So that is worth noting uh, if you do accidentally hit export or if you're not paying attention you're not going to screw anything up. A model sharing will handle that issue for you and uh, prompt you to do a write out first. Now if you also notice um, up here you can see that it is letting me know that there are some packets available. So the longer you go without a read in this number will continue to increase. Right now there's only one packet that's available for download. Um, but that may say three, that could say five, that could say ten. You know, it all depends on how long it's been and how many uh, shares have been done uh, between the last time uh, I did a read in and this current time. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click the read in button. And at this point, uh, the Tecla model will connect to the sharing service and it's going to process any packets um, that it's finding up there. And then it's going to add that data to the model. And it's also going to give me this kind of a, a list of the changes that's that have happened in this model since I did my export. So as you can see here, all of these columns have been modified. It's lighting them up in yellow, letting me know who changed them, the date that that was done. Uh, in this case, I can clearly see what was changed, but if I keep scrolling, you can see that there's cuts and bolts and added material fittings and base plate components, you know, all kinds of stuff technically being added here. Uh, if I go to the drawings tab, you can see that there is a new drawing that's been created, this AB1. Uh, again, created by Lee Snyder. So again, just kind of giving me a heads up as to what has happened with this read-in. So if I close this, uh, we can see now that the model has been updated with those changes. So I have the anchor bolts that have been created by Lee. If I wanted to review the drawing, I can go ahead to the drawings and reports. And there we can see the drawing that Lee created. Uh, I can go ahead and double click on it and we basically see everything that he's done, any edits that he's created. Um, you know, it's a full access to the Tecla drawing as if I had created it. Uh, so let me go ahead and close and go back to the model. And um, as we can see, I am now allowed to go ahead and do a write out of my own. So I'm gonna do a fresh write out. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna add a comment saying um, that the stair system added and then click save. And now my packets, my changes will be pushed out to the Tecla model sharing cloud. And then, you know, in this time period, I can now continue working. Lee can continue working and he's not gonna get those packets until he actually does a read in. He's not gonna get stopped from work or anything like that um, until he's ready to do that read in and get those latest changes. In the top left hand corner, I can see that there's one new packet for me to read in. So I'll click that to read in the data. It will then insert those changes, whatever information has been shared in my model, and then I'll be able to review that in the changes list. So once that's loaded in here, I can look at the changes list. I see the physical objects and the model folder files. I can see the stuff that's been modified in yellow, and then all of the new stuff for the stair has been added in green. If I want to view that in further detail in the model, I can use these options at the bottom to select objects in the models. I highlight them in the changes list and I can also zoom to them so I can click on these columns. These are where connections have been added for the stair tying into those columns. And then if I want, I can scroll through the list and view all of the additional information that's been added. And then over here on the new model files, I can see that additional things have been added. So the bolt catalog, for example, some changes to the component catalog and then changes to the grid settings in the document manager. So it gives me a great list of all the stuff that's new, modified, or deleted. 
And then once I'm done reviewing those changes, I can close that and then just begin interacting with the model like I typically would. So if I want to check out one of these connections to the column, I can do that. Um, but now I have the latest state of the model that I can continue working with. So if you think Tecla model sharing is a great fit for your company or for a project, uh, the great news is that there is a free trial available. All you have to do is go to our website, this tecla.com products tecla model sharing. You can also just go and do an internet search for tecla model sharing and this will be the first um, hit for you. On this page you can see it gives you some information about tecla model sharing and then there's this button to start a free trial now and as you can see it will include 10 model sharing licenses for three months. So this is a great way to you know just kind of kick the tires and figure out how this is going to work best for you. When you click to start the free trial, it is going to give you a little bit of information about what's required. You do have to be an admin on your online Tecla account. If you don't know who that is at your company, you can reach out to your local support and we can definitely find out for you. Um, but when you go to the Tecla account using the Tecla online admin tool, you're going to see something like this. So this is just a sample of one of our customer pages. Um, you have a list of employees and then separate columns for each of the different levels of access that you want to control. The first one is who has admin privileges? Who can actually make changes here? The second one is who has access to other Tecla web services like the forum um, or the download page? And then who has access to Tecla model sharing? And as you can see, you can simply check or uncheck to give or take away access. Now during the trial, you can do up to 10 people and afterwards if you do purchase then obviously you can have it for as many licenses as you actually purchase. Um, it is worth noting that if you do uncheck and check you change license uh, access it does take several hours for it to actually transfer from one person to another so it's not something you can just switch on the fly. Also, if you're moving from one computer to another computer, that can be uh, a, a delay. So make sure that you have a model sharing license set aside for each person on each computer that they're going to be doing this on. Now you can also share these licenses with people outside your organization. You can go to the external license users tab and this is going to enable outside people to also take part in your model sharing if that's something that you want to do. Uh, so it's not just for people inside of your company or organization. The last thing that I want to show you is there's also a Tecla model sharing management console. So this is just great if you're curious about what's being used, who's using it, what models have been done. Uh, when you come to this page on manage teclamodelsharing.com uh, you can see that there's a models uh, link up here and if you click on that link it'll bring up a list of all of the models that are currently being shared using your licenses. So here you can see there's that model sharing review that Lee and I have been working on. Uh, the data was created and then what Tecla version. You can click on the users link here and you can see how many users are in the uh, project along with their current role. Uh, if I go back, we can also see how many um, uploads there have been and what types. So here we have a baseline model, the initial upload, and then incremental uploads beyond that. And obviously this is just super simple because we've just done this quick little video. Um, but this is just a great way to see what's going on, do a little bit of management um, of the models in the sharing service and the people using it. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you have any questions about Tecla model sharing, uh, be sure to reach out to your local help desk. They can obviously get you set up and, and answer any management questions for you that you may have. And thank you for watching.